Last three. The Oakland Raiders, the defending AFC champions, two and seven. Ontario Smith is deep to receive the kickoff of Sebastian Janikowski. Here's Ontario Smith from the 12. Led around the corner by Keenan Howry and down the sideline into Oakland territory and out of bounds inside the 40, no, 43-yard line. Great return for Ontario Smith. Ronald Curry chased him out of bounds. Four-yard return. The Vikings start from the Raiders 44 with Dante Culpepper at quarterback and three wide receivers. And the handoff to Michael Bennett on first down gets him a couple of yards. He's pushed forward by Trace Armstrong. Let's look at the Vikings on offense. Second leading passer in the NFL is Dante Culpepper. He has had a great season. His offensive line is a good one. With Mike Rosenthal, David Dixon, Matt Burke, Chris Lewinsky, and the rookie, the second year man, Brian McKinney. Look at Randy Moss looking for his sixth consecutive 1,000 yard season. Mo Williams in the backfield goes out. Culpepper throws intercepted. Philip Buchanan down the sideline, heading for the end zone. Touchdown. Buchanan, the playmaker, with his third touchdown of the season. The fifth of his two-year career. Sam, and his third interception return for a touchdown in his career. Sam, I, there is no way possible that Dante Culpepper ever saw Philip Buchanan. Because that ball never should have been thrown. 64-yard return. Janikowski for the extra point. And still in the opening minute of the game, the Oakland Raiders have a seven to nothing lead. Well, 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 here, first of all, Dante Culpepper, he's looking to the right side first. I, I just, I, I just can't believe that he ever saw Buchanan because in the route that was run, see, he comes off him and steps underneath. This was to Klein Saucer. I'm gonna show you what this was. This is to Klein Saucer on, on a little out. Here's Saucer right here, and he's going to work up right here, and he's going to be covered by the linebacker. Up here is Buchanan. Buchanan covers his man and then comes off and underneath. I don't think he ever sees Buchanan come off. And that, that's a case, and that's a, that's a matter of, of cornerbacks looking at the quarterback's eyes. And, and you saw where Dante Culpepper first was looking to the right side of the field, to where Randy Moss was, which he got bumped at the line of start. I mean, he got jammed by Charles Woodson, and that made Dante Culpepper come back to his check down, which was the tight end, Klein Saucer. But he never saw Philip Buchanan come off and follow that read. Buchanan has turned into one big playmaker, the second year man out of Miami, first round draft pick last year, who had two touchdowns in only six games last season. There's three touchdowns in ten games this season. Ontario Smith again on the return. Goes to the left side, and this time he's down hard by Tim Johnson, number 41. Make that Eric Johnson, excuse me. Eric Johnson, number 41, took him down. The Raiders are fired up after the Buchanan interception and return for a touchdown. Their defense has not performed well as far as sacks are concerned, only 11 this season. Napoleon Harris, Eric Barton is a big playmaker for this team. And Rod Woodson, despite injuries, still going strong, but look for the Charles Woodson-Randy Moss matchup. Williams in the backfield. Outside of Randy Moss. Rod Woodson gets there, takes him down at the 18. That's just a little smoke pass outside. And the reason that the Vikings like to do that quick stuff at the line of scrimmage to Randy Moss is early in the game that they want to get Randy Moss the ball. They, they want to get him his touches. Confidence factor, a little building before they take in their deep shots with him. And you see the NFL record that Randy Moss holds starting his career six consecutive 
seasons with over 1,000 yards receiving. That one from Moss is through his hand. Charles Woodson had him covered on that play. Well, this is the, this is what you've, 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 you've come to watch. And this is, here's Woodson outside. Now, this is on the other side of the field. That's not Charles Woodson's spot that he lines up. He's lining up there at the right corner. He normally plays left corner. But as Chris Myers told us right after the open, Charles Woodson, that's the matchup. Wherever Randy Moss goes, Woodson's going to go to that side of the field. Here is third and a long five for the Vikings. Three wide receivers, six defensive backs in for the Raiders. Moss is in motion. Culpepper out of the shotgun, has time, drops it off on the screen to Bo Williams. And he works his way outside for their big gainer. Nice move by Williams, still going strong and finally ridden down by Charles Woodson. At 39 yard line just inside the 40 a little screen pass that turns into a huge gain and Charles Woodson is shaken up on the play he was the man who made the tackle on Mo Williams this is what Mo Williams is this is a screen pass okay and this is unconventional because he's out in front of the blockers but he finds a way to bring it all together and Mo Williams isn't a household name what he is to the Minnesota Vikings fan what he is and what he does when he gets the ball in his hand Sam anything can happen that's a 42 yard gain and Woodson holding his back after going down he comes out of the game replaced by number 22 Terrence Shaw oh that's the, now you go up here this is where you take your shot Vikings again in Raiders territory at the 40. This time it's Michael Bennett with a big hole and it goes inside the 30 to the 29. There's a flag on the play at the line of scrimmage and it's holding against the Vikings. You know, you, you, you would think that it's, when Woodson comes out, and that's that's usually a coach's mentality. When they see an injury on the field, especially in holding. a key matchup situation. Number 74, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Again, the Vikings are set back to midfield. First and 20. Three wide receivers again. Long count by Culpepper. Michael Bennett following the block of Matt Burke, the center who pulls and leads the blocking for a four yard pickup. Let's check out what happened to the. To Sam, Bill, and Chris. Thanks so much, JB. Kansas City's first loss. We're watching the Oakland Raiders, and what a job Marvin Lewis has done with the Cincinnati Bengals, who are tied with Baltimore at 5-5 five and five atop the AFL. Foul on Eric Barton, number 50, has given the Vikings a foul at the Raiders' 31-yard line. Culpepper steps up under pressure and runs. And he's ridden down from behind by the rookie Tyler Brayton. The number one draft pick out of Colorado who's done a nice job on the defensive line for the Raiders. You know, and, and, and he's an undersized defensive end right now. You can look at his body and tell that he's still a very young man. And look at the face. I mean, that, that's a young guy. But he's been at there the whole time. He's been learning. And, and when you're this late into the season, Sam, it, it gets tiresome. He, he, talking to him this week, he said every single week, I'm learning more and more about the game, and that's the hardest part for them. DeLawrence Grant, number 99, in on the defensive line for the Raiders, and that play is stopped. Ball start against the Minnesota Vikings. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 83, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Like that every once in a while. At the Raiders, 32, two tight ends in for Minnesota, Klein Saucer and number 83, Hunter Goodwin. On second and 11, the play fake by Culpepper being rushed, gets rid of it, nobody there. That's got to be a, that, that's, there's nobody there, it's got to be a flag. That, that has to be intentional grounding. He was inside the tackle, tackle box, Culpepper. and there, there wasn't a receiver in the vicinity. Culpepper is claiming that someone was out there. I think the officials are agreeing. Trace Armstrong with good pressure. Flag down. Yep. Intentional grounding. Number 11. Offense. Penalty at the spot of the foul. Loss of down. 
Third down. Take your shot. But, but, but they didn't. Good coverage by Woodson. Here's third and 21. They have to get to the Raiders 21 for a first down. Culpepper being pressured. Steps up and fires on the play. The completion to Nate Burleson. But I believe that they come back. The ball pops loose. A fumble recovered by the Raiders. Rod Woodson has the ball. The ever-present Rod Woodson, like another coach on the field. Holding, number 75, offense. Penalty is declined. First down, Raiders. Two turnovers by the Minnesota Vikings on their first two possessions. Philip Buchanan, as he's wrestling them down, that ball comes down. But was his knee down on the ground before that ball came out? I, I, that, that's worth a look. He no, he, he, landed, he landed on the knee that, of Buchanan. That's right. So a break for the Raiders there. The fumble is recovered. And the Raiders go on offense. Their first play from scrimmage in the game. Tyrone Whitley busting straight ahead up to the 33-yard line. Kevin Williams took him down. There's Rick Meyer in his second start in the last four years. He's the quarterback with Rich Gannon and Marcus Tuiasasopo done for the season. The offensive line, Lincoln Kennedy playing hurt, but the solid man at tackle. Jerry Rice has not had a touchdown reception, but leads the team with 41 catches on the year. And Tim Brown is in motion. Here's Wheatley again, a big hole. Up to the 39, first down Raiders. Let's get another update from JB. What's going on? Rams were down 14-3 in that game. Zach Crockett is in the backfield for Oakland. It's Tyron Wheatley carrying. He is picking up, picking up big chunks of yardage. The Raiders are running the ball well. Last week, they started the game 21 consecutive runs. In fact, they had an 80-yard touchdown drive with 19 plays, all of them on the ground against the New York Jets. They ran the ball 52 times in the game. And the Vikings know that if they have any chance in this game, they have to stop the run. Justin Fargus is in the backfield. The rookie carries in another big game as the Vikings continue to be chewed up by the running of the Oakland Raiders down to the 42. Sam, one of the areas that Mike Tice was concentrating on fixing that defense was the second level. That was the linebackers. I want you to watch the linebackers here. W watch what they do. They start, and they start moving this way. See them stutter step there? And it takes them a while to get back. And by the time they start coming back, you see how they're just a man short? Th they start cheating. They start going too hard to where the flow is. It's misdirection causes the problem. Three wide receivers in. Vargas burst through the hole. Lost the ball. The ball was lost, a fumble recovered by the Vikings. So each team fumbling. Kevin Williams, the defensive end, came up with the ball. It was knocked loose by Brian Williams. Well, there wasn't any misdirection about this. This is just straight man blocking, straight ahead running. And Justin Fargus, he hit it up in there fast, real fast. And as he hit Brian Williams, it was Brian Williams who got his body in it right there, bang. He gets in there, and that's what knocked the ball out. His helmet hit the ball. So the running, the ground game working for the Raiders, but they cough it up. Now the Vikings with their third possession from the 33. Mo Williams tripped up, balls board to about the 37-yard line. Napoleon Harris, the middle linebacker, number 58, with he pins the defensive end to help the tackle out. Then he gets to the second level of blocking, which is the linebacker. The handoff to Mo Williams finds an opening, gets up close, about a yard short of the first down marker, up to the 42-yard line. Mo Williams has had a real good season. And while we're talking about levels, you know, that's up to the running back. On third and one, Williams bounces off and fights his way for a first down. What an effort! by Mo Williams. He 
in behind the line of scrimmage and fought his way up for about a six yard gain. First down Vikings up at the 49. He picked up seven on the play. Great effort by Mo Williams. He he is a big running back in, in a small body. And, and that's that's the best way I could describe Mo Williams. Mo Williams isn't big in stature, but he is big in the things that you said, effort, heart, and desire. And, and he actually likes to run over people. Tough to bring him down with that first hit. This is Michael Bennett. He's hit by the middle linebacker, Napoleon Harris. And that's a loss. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, so we'll one. And you can shut down their run game with seven in the box and not have to bring a safety in so you can leave that safety deep for Randy Moss. That's how you slow down this offense. Three wide receivers in. They fake the end around. Rush on Culpepper. The screen to Mo Williams with two blockers. Turns it into another big game. Williams rumbles down to the 27-yard line. Charles Woodson takes him down, but that's the second successful screen pass that they have run. Well, they have a couple different screens that they run. I want you to watch Matt Burke and, and watch him get outside here. Watch him pull. He pulls through this mess of bodies here, and he's the one that gets the seal right here. See, and then it's a slow screen to Mo Williams, and the same thing they run with Klein Saucer. It's a slow developing screen. They get outside, they position things, and then slowly get to the outside, finding time, and then it opens up just like it did. Picked up 24 on the play. This is Bennett by himself taking it outside, and he's ridden down by Derek Gibson, the safety at the 21 yard line. Seattle's matchup today against Detroit. Seattle leading in that game. Here in Oakland, Sam Rosen, Bill Moss, Chris Byers. Raiders trail it, leading the Minnesota Vikings 7 0. Vikings on the Raiders 21. They turn the ball over twice in their first. Michael Bennett ridden down by Eric Barton. Good play by Barton. Let's go back to JB for another update. JB. Sam, you the NFC West. The Vikings on third and four have Lewis Kelly in at right guard replacing David Dixon. They work out of the shotgun with Williams in the backfield with Culpepper. Culpepper rolls and throws back to the other side. That ball was tipped and fell incomplete. Intended for Nate Burleson. And the Vikings will bring on the field goal kicking. And then defense, and then they rolled Culpepper out to the near side here and tried to throw back downfield. That ball was tipped by a linebacker. And it was great coverage by Buchanan. By Aaron Elling is 10 for 13. Two of those misses from over 50 yards. Elling's kick on the way, it's wide right. So nothing going right for the Vikings. They've had the ball three times, turned it over twice on an action and a fumble, and here they miss a field goal. The Raider Nation is looking good right now. Overtime with Atlanta. New Orleans trying to stay alive in the NFC West. Raiders start from their 20-yard line. Excuse me, their 30. Tyrone Wheatley gets about a yard on the play. Brought down by the middle linebacker, the former Raider, Greg Beaker, who played here for nine seasons. And says his family is here, but they're not sitting in the black hole today, Bill. <laughs> Raider, yeah, that was a great question. Fans. You know, would you bring your family here and would you dress them in Viking stuff? He said, "Yeah, I think I'll be okay. My girls might wear, you know, my Viking jersey, but I think as long, long as it says Beakerd on the back, I, they should be safe." Raiders have not thrown the ball yet. Six plays from scrimmage, all runs. Rice in motion. Wheatley fights his way up close to the 34-yard line. Kenny Mixon, number 79. With the stop, let's go to the line of Chris Myers. Sam, uh, Rick Meyer hasn't thrown yet, but an important day for him. His career has gone from rookie of the year to the black hole. This is sixth is NFL team. Six but he says, hey, Trent Green came out the same year as I did. He didn't play in the league for five years. Look where he is now. I think I can still turn things around and show that I belong. Bruce Allen said that when he was the third string quarterback here, he worked with Rich Gannett early in the morning and late afternoon. They have no doubts about his ability to throw downfield. Thanks, Chris. There's third and seven with Justin Fargus in the backfield. Jerry Rice signaling. And it looks like the Raiders call timeout. Some confusion as position. They're in the NFC South. 
is complete and up to the that was OJ Santiago the tight end up to the 45 for a first down that's what they were trying to create on the last time and they actually did time out they took a penalty for a delay a game and that's what moved them back five yards they come with the blitz and when they blitz look at the seam route down here there's two guys Jerry Porter turned in on the slant to the inside and then OJ Santiago just ran the seam when you go with the blitz, it's a gamble that you're giving up some sort of cover. Two tight ends, two wide outs, the toss to Justin Farnes. With a leap over a would-be tackler, he gets up to the 47-yard line. Time for another update, and J.B. has it. Thanks, J.B. New Orleans coming on, Bill. They're playing much better. From the way they started this season. Raiders on second down. The play fake, the work run from Kevin Williams. The pass wide open is Tim Brown. Inside the 30 and out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Well, this is what happens when, when you get, see that? You get this Alvis Witted in motion. Now, you have to honor that to come with him. That's on a reverse. That takes one corner out of the slot, and you see, you see exactly where Tim Brown settles down. I want you to take a look. Here it is, the all-22 look. You're going to have this motion over here. See this motion? That takes the corner with him. Now you just get Tim Brown to the outside. There's nobody out there. Normally, when you have a fake reverse, you throw to the side of the reverse. They went back to where there was one less man in coverage. 25-yard pickup, Zach Crockett. Going against his brother, Henri Crockett, number 32 carrying, number 52 on the defense. And a fumble by Crockett, and it's recovered by the Vikings. Two turnovers for each team. Fred Robbins comes up with a football. How the heck did that ball come out? That just looked like a little pillow fight in there. They just mushed each other. You just ran in there, and you're all pushing and shoving. Big crowd. Still got it, and it pops loose. Kevin Williams popped it loose. And the recovery by That fumble, the rookie defensive end out of Oklahoma State. I watch this guy play, Sam, and I watch a lot of film. And for a rookie, by far, he is thus far the defensive rookie of the year. On first down, Paul Williams tripped up for a loss. Nice play by Travian Smith. The outside linebackers, we come to the end of the first quarter. It's been a mistake-filled first quarter. Two turnovers by each team, but an interception by Philip Buchanan. The four-yard return has given the Raiders the lead. Culpepper with time, throwing deep for Moss. It's incomplete. Well, no, Moss man. wanted a flag, yeah, and the, referee said, the official right. said yes. Rod Woodson grabbed hold of Randy Moss. Right, when the ball was in the air, and that wasn't uh, holding or incidental contact, that was just pass interference. Pass interference, number 26, defense. Automatic first down. Well, first of all, you got the, there's a lot of protection up front. Here's where the, the ball's in the air, and you see that, see him hit him right there? Disrupted his, his route to the ball, but how much time did Culpepper have in the pocket mm -hmm. for that play to unfold? You, you can't allow any quarterback in the league, no matter if you have Randy Moss as a receiver or not, that much time to make a play because they will make it. Mo Williams steps up to get the call from Dante Culpepper. Culpepper gets time and he goes deep. And it's overthrown, intended for Dwayne Bates. Wayne Bates has only played in four games. This is fifth. He's dressed for six. But the coaching staff feels he's starting to get healthy and can be a big threat for them. And he goes past. That very well could have been a run play that they had called on. But when he saw eight men in the box, he checked out of it and went up. On second and ten. Gets time again. Now being pressured. And it's to Randy Moss for a first down inside the 30. Randy Moss with that catch now moves into third place all time for the Minnesota Vikings in receptions with 479. He passed Anthony Carter. Well, uh, to, again, 
all kinds of time in the pocket for Culpepper, and he can just wait and wait and wait for Randy Moss to come open. Randy Moss was covered initially by Woodson, but Randy Moss, when he runs his he's covered, he'll freelance after that. He'll find a way to get open. Sean Gilbert, number 90, in on the defensive line for the Vikings. Good carry by Mo Williams down to about the 21-yard line, making it to 22. Picked up about five on the play. Travian Smith made the tackle. You don't like the Chiefs? <laughs> <laughs> not hardly, Joe. No, yeah. not at all. Second down, make it second and four. Six-yard pickup by Williams on the last carry. Williams, a couple of blocks. Front, cuts it back, and good piece of running. He's very close to a first down. Sean Gilbert made the tackle. You see the yellow first down line. He's right on it. Sam, remember we talked about this guy is really an amazing athlete to play center. Kelly Campbell is in at wide receiver. Three wide outs for Minnesota with Jim Kleinsasser lining up in the backfield. First down, Vikings at the Raiders 18. Culpepper. Plenty of time. Throws out to Mo Williams. Williams, who had 11 receptions last week against San Diego, had the ball in his hands and just dropped it. And, and that, then he shouldn't have. That was, that was just all Mo Williams' fault. Find some way to muster a pass rush. It's hard to do with the blitz because you need extra men in coverage when you're defending Randy Moss. Burleson in motion. Three wide receivers for the Vikings. It's Mo Williams. And down about the 15-yard line. Third, seven. Chris Cooper, number 75, made the tackle on Mo Williams. You know, Mo Williams, cheating. Mm -hmm. He's been a vital, vital part of this Vikings offense early in the season while Michael Bennett's been on the mend. Eighth play of this drive. Have to get to the eight-yard line for a first down. Lost motion. Culpepper gets time. Plenty of time. Nobody open. Now he runs for it. Little dancing, tripped up, stayed on his feet, but is brought down at about the 17-yard line. Akbar Bajabiamila, number 98, who's in a defensive end, made the tackle. The younger That's brother of the Packers, Kabir Bajabiamila. Take a look downfield. This is what you call a coverage sack. Everybody is covered up. There's all kinds of good pass protection. Dante Culpepper has time. But nobody could get open. And that's that's quite a credit to the secondary of the Raiders because you shouldn't have to cover a wide receiver that long. Only the 12th sack of the season for the Oakland Raiders. This 35-yard field goal tried by Aaron Elling. This one is through. So the Vikings, after turning the ball over twice, missing a field goal, finally on their fourth possession of the game, put some points on the board, but they still trail the Raiders seven to three. First time, his first NFL game, rookie out of Colorado State. And the kickoff by Elling coming down to Justin Fargus at the five. First good speed and is brought down on a good Nick tackle Davis. by Nick Rogers, Rogers, number 58, up at the 27 yard line. Fargus gets up limping. And that's a bad sign for the Raiders. That's one of the guys we highlighted right there with Nick Rogers. Watch him come down here and blow this thing up. They've gone wrong this season. A lot of injuries, certainly, to the MVP, Rick Gannon. Myra with his third pass of the game. Tyrone Wheatley out of the backfield, across the third line brought down by Greg Beekert. Well, you mentioned all the things that went right have gone wrong this year. It's been the big thing has been the injuries. And you don't like to blame injuries. You know, no coach and no football team likes to blame injuries. But take a look. I mean, if you, you're you missing Gannon and you're missing Garner and Romo, Perella, hey, I mean, they're, they're your key. That's your core guys. And there's Rich Gannon. He's got the uh, headsets on listening, not to us, of course, but to, but the play's being called to the offensive huddle. You see his arms in a sling. And he had shoulder surgery two days ago. Back here with the team trying to help out Myron. Big catch on the play by the fullback, Chris Hetherington. Great catch up at the 49-yard line. And Myra hung in there. He got blasted. Yeah, yeah he, he did get blasted. I got to tell you, now, now he's very lucky. It was a great catch by Hetherington. And there's two people on him. And their defenders' backs are away from the ball. Hetherington is actually the only one that gets to, to see the ball, and he pulls in and gets a catch. But 
Rice was sitting in the middle of the field. In that cover two defense, the middle is the vulnerable spot. He was sitting there and nobody. First catch of the season for Chris Hetherington. Two men in the backfield, it's Wheatley rolling across midfield. We've got another update coming to you from the studio and JB. Over in Detroit, back to Sam Rosen. It's called being in the right spot at the right time. Tyrone Wheatley across the 45 to the 44, Corey Chavis. The strong safety, number 21, took him down. Sam, I've, I've seen this, and I've seen this the last few weeks with the Vikings. And the key to them is to get the linebackers moving one direction. Watch, they're going to start them off over this way. See them? I'm sorry, they started to the left, and then they cut back to the right. I was turned around there a little bit from the camera angle. But you get the linebackers going one way, and then you come back the other. Two tight ends in, Meyer, nobody open. Rolling left. He wanted Wheatley to go downfield. Wheatley stopped to block, and Meyer goes out of bounds for a loss of a couple of yards back to the 46-yard line. Out of bounds by Brian Russell. Looked like Meyer kept wanting Wheatley to go. The old Oklahoma Sooners, but, but not in the NFL. And this week, I, I think he's trying to get him to see stuff, but it's moving way too fast. Shane Leckler, first one of the game, backs the Vikings up to about the 10-yard line. Keenan Howry waving for the fair catch. 36-yard punt. It's 7-3. The Raiders still leading. And Charles Woodson, a featured matchup. They're against quite a bit of the time. Moss has two catches thus far in the game. And like we talked about earlier, or, or Chris Myers had mentioned that you know, Charles Woodson, last time they played, held him without a touchdown. And he feels confident. He's, he's not intimidated by Randy Moss at all. And I, I find that hard to believe. Vikings 143 yards offense thus far in the game. Eight. But only eight three up. points. Eight up. He's checking to the pass. Paul Pepper. Blitz coming. And he's hit as he throws. It's a fumble, a fumble. And it's recovered by the Raiders. Rod Coleman. They're spotting it at the one-yard line. Napoleon Harris, the middle linebacker with the blitz, hit Culpepper as he released. Well, they had eight up against Sam, and they were going to come with the blitz, or if they had a run on, they had an eighth man in the box. See, he comes, steps out, he changes it. There's his call. He's changing to a pass. Burke turns around to look, and he never really gets set because right here, he gives up the A-gap. The A-gap is to either side of the gap or the center. Lewinsky doesn't get down inside. Napoleon Harris rushes in and hits Culpepper before he gets started. First and goal at the one. Zach Crockett trying to force his way in. Denied by the Vikings. No, not denied. He did get in. Oh. On the second effort, Crockett forced his way across the goal line. Touchdown. Oh. See, now, no, wait a second. He kept I saw pushing. You. You, I saw you call the score when, when the official raised his hands, but did you see him cross the line? I've got to see it again. I, I didn't see. All I saw was a mass of bodies. All right, let's see here. Stop, stop, stop. Where, where in the heck is there? There's no way that crossed the goal line. And, right. Unless there's a tunnel down there someplace. Well, no challenge. Play continues. The point by Janikowski is good, and the Raiders take advantage of another Vikings turnover. It's 14 to 3. There's a trap door down there someplace, and it's all part of the Raider mystique. There was no challenge on the play, and eventually, Zach Crockett fell in. Ontario Smith on the return for Minnesota. Taken down by Anthony Dorsett at the 24-yard line. Crockett kept fighting. What do you think? You can see the effort. There's the ball on the goal line. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. It's the Minnesota Vikings have had the ball five times. They've turned it over three. They missed the field goal and kicked the field goal. This is their sixth offensive possession. Mo Williams straight ahead. He's met by Travian. 
Turnover is a big factor already in this game. Culpepper's pass picked off by Philip Buchanan, returned for a touchdown. Burleson, fumble the ball, recovered by the Raiders. Justin Fargus turned one over by the Raiders as they were driving. And it was Zach Crockett turning it over. And then this huge one by Dante Culpepper. Minnesota Vikings came today's game with the second fewest turnovers in the league, just nine. And they have three already in the game. Line saucer shifts. Culpepper throwing on second down. Oh, his man was spun around by Eric Barton. He tried to get it to Mo Williams. Hey, you know who's having a fine game? Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator for, for the Raiders. He really is because he's mixing what he does and it's keeping Minnesota off balance. You, you see zones and then you see man coverage, then you see blitzes and you have eight man fronts to stop the run. He's of everything and he's mixing in the blitz and he's backing off and then he's coming and back. And it's get, keeping Minnesota out of rhythm offensively. Vikings come with four wide receivers and go empty backfield. The fifth man is Pine Saucer, the tight end. Have to get to the 33 for first down. And Culpepper turns and calls timeout. Just in time. The clock got down to one. At the south end zone of the Coliseum here where Raider fans dress up every weekend and cheer on their heckle the other team. Moments ago, they were chanting Randy's name. Randy, Randy as in Randy Moss. They look tough, but these people during the week, well, the one's a school bus driver, another's an accountant, an attorney, yeah, there's some contractors in there. It's a tough crowd. When I asked them, they said, we're not as mean as we look, as long as you root for the Raiders. Let's go back to Bill and Sam. And I know who Chris told him he was rooting for. I have to tell you something, Chris cleaned that up a little. They were chanting more than just Randy, Randy. Mike Tice went down there and visited. Yeah, him. there you go. Well, they're not going to mess with him. He's six seven. Well, you know what? They, they look intimidating with all the get up and stuff. But the truth of the matter is, they're just big time fans. They love football. Vikings on third and six. Have to get to the 34 for a first down. Empty backfield again. And somebody moved. Looked like Mike Rosenthal moved. The right tackle. Yeah, but he's pointing at Grant saying, you know, you guys were jumping at me and you're not allowed to flinch at the at the offensive lineman. Ball start. Number 75 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. And it is against Mike Rosenthal, the former giant who said uh, he took a high risk on himself coming out to Minnesota. He usually is doesn't take chances like that, but he needed a change and he signed with the Vikings. And he's been happy ever since. He's fit in very well on the offensive line. But the penalty sets the Vikings back five. It's third and 11. And now they go shotgun with Klein Saucer in the backfield. Receivers. Culpepper being blitzed by Woodson. He's got him. Charles Woodson blitzing from the outside. Takes down Dante Culpepper. And the Vikings are forced to punt. Look at Bresnahan, what a game he's calling. Watch, they're going to bring come with the blitz. You, when you have the slot receivers, you have guys inside here. You can bring the corner. See him cheat in and get inside? He's got clear sailing to the quarterback. And they're bringing more people to his than the Vikings have there to protect. Eddie Johnson, first punt of the game for the Vikings. Philip Buchanan steps up, takes it at the 40. Buchanan taken down. He had a punt return for a touchdown last week. Great day thus far for the Raiders. It's a beauty here in the Bay Area, and the Raiders have a 14-3 lead. Charles Woodson, four tackles in the game. Well, Rick Myra, four for four passing. Tyrone Wheatley following the block of Brad Manager. A fumble on the play. Let's see. trying to. The they're still down digging. Down. They're still digging. <laughs> no, looks they're like he's down. Yeah, looks like it's still Raider ball. <laughs> Wheatley. Kenny Irvin with a hit. Ball came loose, but it looked after he hit the ground. Looked like he was down on the play. 
Three wide receivers in Jerry Porter, number 84. Is in along with Tim Brown and Jerry Rice. It's Tyrone Wheatley straight ahead. Big wow. hole and a big collision, but a first down. Wheatley running straight ahead hard. Ran into Corey Chavis. Hey, the Raiders are doing a fine front. They've got some big watch. Watch big Lincoln Kennedy here. Comes down on the double team on Hove. And look at the push he gets. Now, when remember we were talking about the levels of blocking? And you have to, the most important thing to do in a run game is you have to block the down people first. And to move them out, you get the double team. And sometimes that washes you right back into the second level. Rice in motion on first down. It's Wheatley again. Spins at the 40. Gets down to the 36. Tenth carry of the first half for Wheatley. They're without Charlie Garner, but Wheatley is running it well. Yeah, look at the look at the mass of humanity right here, all taking steps this way. And look when they get going. That looks like a big black wave coming at you. And it's just washing Minnesota downfield as they make the turn to the perimeter. Wheatley and Crockett in the backfield oh, together. Tim Brown in motion. Wheatley tripped up by Beekert, the middle linebacker. Good penetration on the play by the former Raider. And, you know, to stop that, to stop the bleeding sometimes when you're, you're mismatched just on size alone and you're getting beat physically, sometimes you need to install run blitzes. You know, you, you always think about blitzes come for, for the pass rush. Well, watch Beekert. This is a run blitz. He comes flying downhill at the snap of the ball, and he knows exactly what the play is going to be run, and he's there as the handoff there. Vikings now have two rookie linebackers in, E.J. Henderson and Mike Nateel. Wheatley trying to get outside, and good penetration that time by E.J. Henderson, Henderson, the rookie middle linebacker, the middle linebacker of the future for the Vikings. Well, you, you know, the reason that you're going to see these guys, Nateel, come in, and you're going to see Henderson come in, and these guys, because they have more speed. They have more speed than Beekert has. They have more speed than Claiborne has. They're just young, fresh, fast bodies that aren't injured. And, and that's been a problem for them. Sometimes they run getting to where they're supposed to be, but it's really been a problem for them in nickel situation, which that was third down. They match up better with your receivers. Raiders want to talk it over. They've called a timeout here. They're thinking about going for it on fourth down. They've been a team that goes for it a lot on fourth down. In fact, 13 times this season. You know, see what you do here is, is this is an area where you've got a big kicker that sometimes you, you like to take the delay game and see if you can draw them off sides. You get a whistle that stops the play. Or sometimes you, you draw your sides. But see, that area of the field, when you have a big kicker, you want to have more room to work with, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and if, and if you got him to jump offside, then you have fourth and one, and then you go for it. Leckler leads the... NFL false start number 51 offense penalty is declined fourth down and the reason it's declined is Minnesota doesn't want to give Leckler more yeah. room to work that, with. that's exactly right just what we were just talking about Leckler leads the NFL in gross yardage and net yardage punting deep Keenan Howry Howry waits for a fair catch at the nine yard line where the Vikings will start from. So the field position belongs to the Raiders. After a 31-yard punt, we go down to the sideline to Chris Myers. Sam, uh, you and Bill were talking about the linebackers a moment ago. Andre Crockett, of course, the younger brother of Zach Crockett, who is the Raider fullback. And they have a unique sibling rivalry because they don't really get to play each other, even though they're up tackling each other in the backyard near the clothesline on a sandy field. Zach Crockett, of course, has the only touchdown of the game. During the week, he said, I'm going to put up some numbers on you. And Andre said when he was with the Falcons, they played in one other game, and he tackled them. Zach said, he never tackled me. The game hadn't even started, and the brothers were already fighting. So far, Zach has the advantage. Vikings from the nine, three wide receivers. Williams in the backfield. Culpepper throws for Kleinsasser, and the tight end makes the grab at the 16-yard line. You know, hey, Chris Myers, you know, don't forget, Andre Crockett was in that pile that Zach Crockett fumbled the ball. So he, he helped out on that tackle, and he also helped strip that ball. So it might be evened up a little bit, even though Zach has a touchdown. Saw that update, Seattle destroying Detroit in the first half. 
35 to 7, trying to hold on to a tie for first place with St. Louis in the NFC West. Movement yep. on both sides of the ball. Flags go down. False start against Minnesota. Another penalty on the Vikings. False start. Number 76 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Set back to the 11 yard line. On second down. Later showing blitz. Out of the shotgun. Culpepper swings it out. Oh. It's incomplete. Oh, there's a flag. Williams there's a flag. Downfield where Randy, near where Randy Moss was. They, they might have a hold on Randy. against contact foul number five zero defense five yard penalty automatic first down that's the linebacker Eric Barton who made the contact beyond five yards of the line of scrimmage uh, uh, was that Eric Barton actually or, or, or was it here he comes right in here and there's the contact and you know that's that's a good call it's the proper call but it, but if I'm Eric Barton I'd do the same thing with Randy Moss. There's no way I want him coming into my zone and feeling comfortable that he can run around five. He does, try to get a piece of it. It does give the Vikings a first down. Culpepper through behind Nate Burleson. He reached back to his right hip and dropped it. JB's got an update at the studio. Go ahead, JB. Hey, St. Chris. I think the Lions need to turn around and go home. Well, that's, that's the teacher giving the student more of a lesson. Longer than Mariucci. Seattle trying to keep pace with St. Louis in the NFC West. Culpepper throwing and completing the Burleson, who is stopped in his tracks up at the 24-yard line. Terrence Shaw with the tackle. As we're getting late in the first half, they are second in the league on third down conversions. Mo Williams in the backfield, and the whistle stops it. We've come to the two-minute warning. Culpepper goes to the sideline. The Vikings have not been able to score. Receiver side. Receivers in on third and two. Same thing they got going again. No Williams in the backfield with Culpepper. He gets time. And he throws to Klein Saucer for a first down. Big tight end. It takes two men to bring him down. Up at the 38, but it's a first down. Travian Smith and Rod Woodson stop the big Jim Klein saucer. 14 yard pickup. No huddle for the Vikings as they move to the line with two timeouts. They go from the 38. Again, three wide receivers. Moss and Campbell up top. Culpepper short to Burleson, holds on. Like he juggled and hold, held on. And he's down at the 44 yard line. Travian Smith took him down. A little sugar huddle here. Calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. Trying to conserve a little bit of time. Rollison and Campbell. Moss right. Moss matched up with Charles Woodson. Culpepper gets time. Outside to Campbell, and Kelly Campbell is taken down across this field at the 49-yard line by Terrence Shaw. And now the Vikings use a timeout. They have one remaining. An important drive here for the Vikings late in the first half as they are down by 11. Three wide receivers, Williams in the backfield. Out quickly. Randy Moss spins his third catch of the game. He's brought down by Philip Buchanan at the 43-yard line. A good move on Culpepper's part. They brought the blitz off the slot again. The slot corner came on the blitz out of nickel, and Randy Moss was out there. That's where that's where he 42-yard line, a pickup of seven on the play. Fine saucer is a tight end to the right side. Lined up in the slot to the left. Culpepper steps up, being pressured. Got it away to Mo Williams. And he's got enough for the first down at the 38 yard line. Eric Barton with the hit. Boy, I really like the way the Raiders are playing defense. They're oh. making the receivers pay 
for anything that they catch. Culpepper wants to spike it to stop the Here clock. Flag. He does, and a flag Here's, on the play. Well, I don't believe Randy Moss got back and got set in time before they snapped the ball. He, he was low, just walking back to the to the line of scrimmage, and they're trying to spike the ball. Illegal formation. Number 16 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well. Tackle can't be the end man at the line of scrimmage. Somebody has to be up there. Miscommunication trying to get that quick quick snap off. Vikings sent back to the Raiders 42. Paul Pepper. Plenty of time. Nobody open. Runs. Plenty of room to run. And they'll take it inside the 30. Great run by Culpepper to the 28-yard line. Philip Buchanan chased him out of bounds. The best running quarterback, I think, in the league. Size-wise, that's for sure. You don't want to be the third level or the second level and see Dante Culpepper charge that for it. Now, look at the open area right in there. And, that, and that's where he takes off. Now, there was some great coverage downfield. And the were all covered up, and he wasn't comfortable throwing it. So when you get an alley, he's gone. I don't want to forget Michael Vick, but he's out injured. On second down and one, the blitz coming late. The short pass over the middle of Moss, complete for a first down. Charles Woodson on the tackle. And now the Vikings call timeout with 10 seconds remaining. Hold him. You tell everybody in the huddle what we're doing. We don't have any timeouts left. Moss is to the right side, and Woodson is opposite him. Ten seconds to go in the half. Culpepper gets time, fakes, goes deep. Into the end zone for Burleson. It's too far. Incomplete. Philip Buchanan covering on the play. That's that. That's perfect. And that's that's smart, smart coaching by Mike Tice and the, the entire offense. That's everybody being on the same page. We had a scenario. It'll be a 44-yard attempt. And the Raiders call timeout. He's missed four this season, two from beyond 50 yards. Gus Perot on the hold. This is a 44-yarder. On the way, and he missed. Two misses. Oh, that really hurts. Makeable distances for the Vikings. They have left points on the field. There's a flag Good on flag. the play. We got to check this out. Nothing has gone right for the Vikings today. After the play, there was a dead ball, unsportsmanlike foul called number 83. That penalty is declined. The half is over. Hunter Goodwin, the man called. Aaron Elling is set to kick off to start the second half. You know what the thing about it is, Sam, too, is the Raiders need to just keep doing what they're doing. I, I think they're controlling the line of scrimmage, and I think you're going to see them come back to that a little bit more. And Jerry Rice has not had a catch yet in this game, which is very surprising. I think that he's going to get involved. After catching passes in 265 consecutive games. Big hit on Alvis Witted. And on the return, E.J. Henderson, the rookie linebacker, with the big hit to take him down at the 26-yard line. Boy, that's big. Hey, you know, you talk about setting the tempo for a game. You come out at half, and, and you, you, you know, your coach isn't happy. Your team's unhappy. Mm, that's a tempo setter. That's, that's, that's telling the Raiders, look, okay, you got away with something in the first half. We're setting the tone here the second half. You can't ask for anything more out of your special teams to start a game or start a second half than that. And set to start the second half, Rick Myra was four for four passing in the first half as the Raiders have run the ball. Here they go with a pass on the roll by Myra. Flag on the play. Try to force it in for the tight end, O.J. Santiago. And it was knocked away by Henri Crockett. Well, he, it, it's going to be on Henri Crockett. He's lucky it's just a flag. Number 52, defense. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Uh, in, in, in most states, th this is an assault. <laughs> I mean, he came off the line on that bootleg, and he's just pit-pocketing, mugging, hanging all over the tight end. Take a look. It's, it's this backside right here. There he is. See him? Grabbing him, pulling him in his pocket, has his jersey, tugging on his arm. From the time he left the line of scrimmage, he was just all over. 
Raiders had only 22 offensive plays from scrimmage in the first half. Here is Wheatley across the up to the 32, and Corey Chavis and Henri Crackett combined for the tackle. Take a look at the first half statistics. Rushing yardage even, passing yardage edge to the Vikings, who put up over 209 yards but scored only three points because of three turnovers and two missed field goals. You got it. Look at the time of possession, then look at the turnovers. And, and that should tell you everything about the score. On second down, Wheatley straight ahead, good hole. It's up to about the 38-yard line. Ryan Russell in on the stop. Hovan is hopping off the field. And in comes Billy Lyon. It's a bad sign. Chris Hovan, they, they coach has felt played a good game last week, maybe his best of the season. Here's Hovan up top. He was ridden down by Brad Badger on the, the block. Third and short. It's Wheatley again, and he powers away for a first down. Tyrone Wheatley, who had carried 12 times for 43 yards uh, in the Wheatley first half, hurt. and he's shaking up here. After three carries, that last one, he spun and went down hard. Raiders without Charlie Garner, injured tailbone, re-injured. Wheatley went off under his own power. He seems to be okay, 15 carries, 55 yards. This is Zach Rocket going straight ahead, and Corey Chavis took him down at the 49-yard line. Good pickup of six on first down. They have Zach Crockett and Chris Hetherington. That's a big that's, load in the backfield. Well, that's that's their big package. It's kind of like a short yardage or goal line package, if you will. But these guys, the last few weeks up front, have been doing an outstanding job. And, and when when they those big guys get on you. They almost engulf you. It's like glue. You, ju you just can't get them off you. Kings showing blitz. Straight ahead, Zach Crockett turns it into a big gainer. The race is on. Chavis trying to bring him down. They do inside the 10. What a run by Zach Crockett. Mike Dice can only shake his head on the big run. Second longest run of the season. Yeah, I want you to watch. They, they blitz over here, and he brings it back the other way. They, they blitz to the right side of the center, and, and Zach Crockett cut it all the way back from where the blitz come. The Raiders were yelling blitz, blitz, blitz at the line of scrimmage before they snapped the ball. A career long for Zach Crockett. Here's Wheatley back in the lineup going straight ahead down to the two-yard line. 44-yard run by Zach Crockett. A career long and the second longest run of the season by the Raiders. Well, that sends a message to his brother. Well, I just, I just, I, I saw some good things by the Raiders in the run game. Boy, what a great shot that is. Look at him trying to punch that ball out. Corey Chavis is swinging. He's, he hit him with a three punch. Four wide receivers for the Raiders on second and goal. And they hand off to Whitney, and he's in. Touchdown. They spread everything out with the four wide receivers. And Tyrone Wheatley caps the big drive of 76 yards for the Raiders. Sam. I saw some good things in the run game, and I, and I said right at the halftime, I said, hey, they have to keep on doing what they're doing. And they came out and, and put the game thus far in the second half on the shoulder of the offensive line. Seven plays, all runs for a touchdown for the Raiders. Janikowski's extra point is good. The Raider offense, they keep it on the ground. They power run with Wheatley, Zach Crockett. Watch the guys, big guys inside. Look at that push. They just mug and maul and get all over a whole van. Robbins, and the hole opens up, and it's Wheatley. Attempt 5.8 yards, almost six yards a carry for a total of 138 yards rushing, and we just started the third quarter. Janikowski kicking off. Keenan Howry from the three. For a lane, it's closed. The Raiders shut it down. Led by Chris Hetherington. 
Hasn't he done a terrific job in this game? Chris Myers, what do you got on the sideline? Well, Sam, coming into the game, Randy Moss had been thrown to 94 times, second most in the NFL, and as you talked about at the top with Bill, uh, he'll be ranked when his career is finished among the greats of all time with Jerry Rice. I asked Jerry Rice before the game about Randy Moss. He said he's the truth, but he said, I never felt that I arrived. That's what kept me going. He needs to remember that. Thanks, Chris. Viking start for the A long way to come back. That's some great advice. Sounds like a fortune cookie. Culpepper steps up, goes sideline, and a nice catch by Dwayne Bates. Kept his feet inbounds at the 36-yard line. It's a good catch. Buchanan on the coverage. Sam, have you arrived? I hope so. Well, you know, but don't, you can't think that. Don't ever no. think that you've arrived. No. You have to keep going. You know, because you can't get comfortable, Sam. No. I need you. You to don't like be comfortable. <laughs> No huddle for the Vikings. They go from the 36. Mo Williams straight ahead. Pull down Rod Coleman. The big defensive tackle. Drag them back. Forward progress up the 39 you know, yard that, line. That, there's, a, there's a lot of time left. And who's the lock today? Three wide receivers. The tight end is Jim Klein Saucer. Mo Williams in the backfield. Blitz coming. A play fake. Good pickup. Incomplete. Good coverage by Buchanan on Nate Burleson. Dante's just been a little team come back. He's got a lot of weapons out there. He has a lot of tools. He just has to get it in the right hands and collectively get this thing going. Needs to get to the 46 for a first down. On third down, being pressured. Klein Saucer with a catch on the first down and gets across mm. midfield. They'll spot it right at the field. Eric Barton on the tackle. But you heard Mike Tice talk about getting the tight end. Klein Saucer yeah. involved a little more. There's an indication. Oh, right yeah. There. He can run pass routes. And when he catches the ball, exceptional hands, look out. He will run you over. On first down, Culpepper being rushed. Screen pass to Mo Williams. And the Raiders are there. That was slow developing, and the Raiders took it down. JB's got an update. Let's go to him right now. Was it brains or was it brawn? I've been looking at that Fox advertisement, that promo. Was it brains or was it brawn? <laughs> now you look, you, you look at the, the the Tampa Bay Bucks this year. What, what do you think it was? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They're struggling. That's for sure. They're coming back against Green Bay. Here's second and eleven. Pressure Holding. coming. Shovel pass. Mo, and rather Michael Bennett breaks the tackle, gets to the 31. The middle linebacker, I thought it was Napoleon Harris blitzing on the play, and he just got taken down. Well, speaking of takedowns, boy, did the Vikings with one. They come with the blitz. Now, I want you to watch the center, Burke. He picks up the blitz, but watch this hold, and he just pulls the linebacker, Ooh. the middle linebacker, Napoleon Harris, right to the ground. No flag was called, but he had an F hold enabled Culpepper to get the pass off. 19 yard pickup. Michael Bennett still in the backfield and they stopped the play. False start on Minnesota. And that's been prior to the snap. False start. Sneaking three, in. Three offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Throughout the game the Vikings have been moving and then a penalty will come in. A hold will be a false start. And it is slow their progress. Eight tight end. Six defensive backs in for the Raiders. They have Sean Gilbert and Rod Coleman at the tackles. Wow, you see how they're moving Randy Moss around? You see how they're, they're lining him up in the middle? Now they're motioning him. That's and, the adjustment they've made. And Woodson is going with him. They swing it out to Randy. Made a one-handed catch. Takes it out of bounds. There's a flag on the play. Now a second flag comes in. Charlie, Charles Woodson is covering Moss on the play and took him out of bounds. Bill Levy will fill us in on the penalties after the discussion. Two see, flags. You see that one-handed grab by Moss? Mm -hmm. There was only one foul on the play. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving prior to the snap and not resetting. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, there's again another penalty. First of all, just take a look at the catch. He's running. He just reaches out behind him. One hand snags it, pulls it in. Never Whoa. breaks stride. That, that doesn't even look at it, Sam. He just puts his up there. Oh, man. And again, that ball was thrown behind. 
What you said before about Culpepper being a little off. Just they, a little bit, yeah. They've got to get to the 22 for a first down. This is first down from the 42. Culpepper gets it out to Klein Sasha, holds on. Barrels past Terrence Shaw and then was taken down by Eric Barton. <laughs> well, like, leave, leaving a wake, a wake of down there. They've had enough turnovers this game. They're covered up down going to the check down. It's either going to be Mo Williams, the running back, or the tight end. Second and eight at the 30. Everybody out. Culpepper throws. Almost intercepted by Rod Woodson. Intended for Nate Burleson. Rod Woodson came over, and oh, he wanted that one. You know, the experience of Ron Woodson, his knee is terrible. Watch him looking at the quarterback. He sees the quarterback. Now watch the break. He's breaking. That's a veteran free safety who studies film, who knows how to play the game, realizes the intricacies of the game, and knows how to get on a ball. He's playing on a bad knee, which will require surgery after the season. He doesn't practice all week long, Sam. Ninth play of the drive. Vikings have to get to the 22. This is third and eight. Three wide receivers. Culpepper gets time. Now being rushed. And he fumbles the ball. And the Vikings have recovered. Looked like the fumble was forced by Chris Cooper. It looked like David Dixon is down there with the ball. Well, you know, why did this happen? Because the receivers were covered up downfield. Now, I want you to watch the running back, Mo Williams, here. He is the check down. He's trying to get out into pass coverage, but he gets tripped up there and he can't get out. And there is no check down. There's no safety valve for Culpepper to get rid of the ball. Finally, the rush gets him. And the Vikings are going to go for it on fourth down. It's fourth and 20. They've got to get to the 22 yard line. The Vikings will go for it, trailing 21 to 3. With still a lot of time left in this game. Throw it deep. If it gets picked off, it's the same as a punt. Nobody open. Culpepper running. Now he's throwing deep down into the end zone. It's intercepted. Okay. That's all right. That's they, they, that they knew that going into it. Philip Buchanan with his second interception of the game. His first one was right at the start when he returned at 64 yards for a touchdown. This one off it'll be a touchback and the Raiders get the ball to 20 yard line. Elling the place kicker has been struggling. He said what the heck let's throw it deep it's we score we score it gets picked off it's the same as a punt. Chuck Resnahan the defensive coordinator right there just give him a little kudos saying <laughs> that's my man. That's it. Way to go Philip. Two interceptions thrown by Dante Culpepper in the game. He had three all season coming in. Tyrone Wheatley. Across the 25, a six yard. Greg Beekert on the tackle. Raiders defense has given up only three points against the run, have given up under four yards per carry on third down, four for nine. But the takeaways, four takeaways plus three sacks. They only had 11 sacks coming into the game in nine games. Six yards on the first carry, Sam. That's what they're averaging. That's it. That's exactly what they're averaging. This time, Wheatley is taken down for a two-yard loss at the 24-yard line. Robbins, number 98, leading the way. Well, you know, the, the, the perimeter is a little bit where Minnesota struggles. And that right there was just a tendency breaker. That's all that was. Because on your computer stats, you say, well, when they're in this formation, we don't run outside much with Wheatley at tailback. Well, they said, you know what, let's break, let's break the tendency a little bit. Let's run outside throw the computers off. That's all that play was. Minnesota has the rookie linebackers in, Nakiel and Henderson. This is third and six. Myron Bubble and Kevin Williams got him. The rookie defensive end with help from E.J. Henderson, a man known as Two Big rookies. Ticket. Big Ticket. That's Kevin yeah, the, Williams. He got that nickname uh, in training camp from Billy Lyons. And hey, this kid, I, I just... I watch him play, and the amazing thing about 93 to me is he's 311 pounds, which is the biggest defensive end in pro football today. He is so agile and so fluid in his pass rush, and most rookies are the wall by now, and this kid is still ascending. He's still learning and getting better and better. Leckler, a low line drive punt that bounces and takes a good roll for the Raiders. And they've got it surrounded. Asamoah and Witted are down there. The ball is down at the Vikings 30. 
The Raider Nation, that's a smile for them. After Malcolm at 9.30, 8.30 Central, right here on Fox. From the 30, the play fake by Culpepper, and he's in trouble. He got rid of it to Klein Saucer, and what would have been a loss and turned it into a two-yard gain. A desperation move by Culpepper. Well, watch the play fake, first of all, and, and watch what it does to the lineman. He, he's running downfield. He's still running. He's trying to make the tackle. He's going after the guy. I got him. I got him. <laughs> he doesn't even have the ball. But what happened after that was Culpepper looks like he just slipped. He yeah. was slipping on the ground out there and just threw the ball up, and Klein Saucer made a heck of a grab. And Sean Gilbert chasing Mo Williams on down with plenty of time to pass tip. Mo Williams makes the catch, and the two linebackers, Napoleon Harris and Eric Barton, are there to take him down at the 37-yard line. Yeah, you know, I touchdown percentage for how many times they touch the ball they're number one ranked in the NFL and this Raider defense and Chuck Bresham have just mixed it up and gotten after these guys and slapped them around on third and three the fake toss the fake end around Culpepper being rushed lobs it to Bennett wide Michael Bennett down the sideline runs in at Charles Woodson who shoves him out of bounds at the Raider 24 but there's a flag on the play when he had a clear shot at him 15 yards from the end of the run first down personal foul on the Raiders roughing the quarterback Tyler Brayton he let it go the rookie defensive end Tyler Brayton a 40 yard pickup you know whew. I don't know could he have stopped Bill I don't know like you going for the quarterback's yeah, knees they don't like true. you going for the quarterback quarterback's head that's a tough call but as they protect the quarterback they tack on 15 yards on the personal foul it'll be first down Vikings at the Raiders 12 I mean, you watch the motion here's a fake toss then nobody covers the outside then Randy Moss on the fake reverse and everyone's standing around looking, saying, what the heck, where's everybody going? And they slipped the back out behind everybody. Mo Williams in the field here, two tight ends in. The fake by Culpepper, he runs. He's got room, he goes in, touchdown. Dante Culpepper with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. That, that's a quarterback draw by design. That wasn't a scramble in the pocket. He wasn't looking to pass that. That was all quarterback draw. And of course, Big Matt Burke with a key block for Minnesota. Well, you, you see, Minnesota has had to go to other people to make plays. Up, Aaron Elling, three on field goals in the game, kicks this extra point and hooks it through. The Vikings get a very important touchdown. There's still a lot of time to go. The Raiders still leading, 21 to 10. Otto Graham, 27. Dante Culpepper now 26. Jack Kemp, the former great with the Buffalo Bills. Culpepper has rushed for 30 yards in the game and over 200 yards this season. On the return, Alvis Witted ran into his own man. Stripped up. There's a flag on the play. Russian Jones, number 31, with a good tackle for Minnesota on Alvis Witted. Witted has taken over the kickoff return duties from Justin Fargus, who went out with a bruised knee. And we've got a flag on the play. Bill Levy checking things out. Holding, number 51, return team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, timeout. That's on Tim Johnson, the linebacker, called for holding on the return. It's 21 10, Raiders leading. Because of the defense, those guys belong in the Hall of Fame. There's a great one, Jim Otto. Raiders start from the 12-yard line. They have not thrown a pass in the second half. Now they do. Meyer waits. No, he's sacked. Kevin Williams. There's flags. two flags on the play. There's flags everywhere. Bill Levy will fill us in after a little huddle with a couple of officials. Bill Luckett included there. Back judge. Legal contact and a hold, both against the Vikings. That's going to cost them a first down for the Raiders. Illegal contact. Defense, that penalty is declined. 
holding number 27 defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Another penalty on the Vikings and a first down for the Raiders. Yeah, you know, when you talk about uh, Carl Eller and Jim Marshall, their quest to be in the Hall of Fame, it's it, it, that Hall of Fame thing is a tricky, tricky deal. But, you know, those guys went to Super Bowls, Jim Otto said, on, on the backbone of the defense. And, and, and when you're that good and, and you get a nickname of the group, and those names are still embedded in football fans to this date, that ought to be a good sign to tell you you belong in. I think so. Tyrone Wheatley on first down, short pickup. Ten penalties in the game for the Vikings. Three turnovers. It's a reason why they're trailing. 21 to 10 make it four turnovers in the game that pass at the end of the first half. Well, I'll tell you a guy that reminds me of the, that would, could have played on the Purple People Eaters, and, and that's Kevin Williams. This young man is, is as good as a rookie defensive end as I've seen come into the game in a long, long time. And I'm not talking about Javon Curse and the pass rushers and those guys. I mean defense. Here's Myra rolling being chased. He throws it incomplete. He was chased by Kenny Mixon as Mixon put good pressure on. First pass attempt for the Raiders in the second half. And we're down to the final minute, seven seconds of the third quarter. And as Bill mentioned earlier, there's a, an NFL record streak on the line. Jerry Rice has caught a pass in 265 consecutive games. He has not caught a pass in the game today. Won't happen, Sam. <laughs> well, don't even think about it. Third down and ten. Short drop. The throw complete to the tight end, Doug Jolly. That's a first down up the sideline. And he's out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Good play to the tight end. The second-year man out of BYU, Doug Jolly, picked up 25. Now, Sam, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to get something done, the Vikings. So they come with a zone blitz. Lance, here comes the linebacker. John Stone, the defensive end, drops into coverage on the tight end. Rick Meyer recognizes it. That's pretty good recognition, you know? Mm -hmm. He recognizes it right away and says, hey, here it comes, buddy. No defensive end can cover you. Zach Crockett in the backfield. And John Stone, the former Raider. Crockett carrying, and he's brought down Chris Hovan, who limped off earlier. Makes the stop. We go back to that completion to Jolly. Did you see Hovan limping around with that hurt shin he got on? Myers only thrown the ball six times mm -hmm. today. Well, you said they don't want to put it in his hands to have to win the game. The Vikings would like to, but right. they haven't been successful at doing it. And, and what they have, what Minnesota, I'm sorry, what Oakland has been successful with is running the football. They've got 143 yards rushing. That's right along the lines of what's been going on the last three weeks, and that's why Minnesota's losing. Oakland, where the Raiders take a 21 to 10 lead into the fourth quarter. Last week against the New York Jets, they took the same kind of lead into the fourth quarter and let it get away and lost in overtime. Because they've been getting pounded. Raiders here, second and 10 at their own 42. Wheatley goes in motion. Meyer, pump fake, throws wide open. Jerry Rice. Told you. There's that record. Told you. It wouldn't happen. He catches his first pass of the game. The NFL record is extended to 266 oh, they consecutive just, games. They just realized that. I, I bet they just realized. Hey, Jerry doesn't have a catch. We don't want to put jeopardize that. Let's let's get that worked out right now. <laughs> okay, now I can breathe. Yeah, easy. look at look, 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 Rick Meyer. <laughs> He's like, all right. Twenty-yard pickup. You know that's a responsibility too. Not just winning the game, but Jerry Rice there. You got to keep that streak alive. Jerry Porter in motion. Tyrone Wheatley straight ahead. Tripped oh. up by Brian Russell. Six yards in. He gets down. Uh, I would say five this time. Flag on the play. Pushing and shoving after the whistle. Jerry Porter being separated from one of the Vikings. And Jerry Porter will come in there and block it. When he gets down there amongst the safeties. He'll get in there and knock you around. But he's been injured, Bill. He had surgery earlier in the season. Hernia problem. 
Uh, had the abdominal hernia surgery, and he's still not back in top shape. Fouls against both teams on the play. Unsportsmanlike 84, unsportsmanlike 29. The penalties offset. Second out. Jerry Porter and Brian Williams, Williams of the Vikings. Sam, Minnesota needs to get a whole case of Imodium because they can't stop Oakland's runs. You, got, you, got, you don't get it, do you? Uh, <laughs> I know, it's Laugh Out Loud Sunday, Bill, but uh, okay. And, and tell it, they have not been able to no. stop it. And the Mike Tice thought they were doing a good job at halftime, but I thought they would just get going. Whitley's 21 carries over 70 yards. He's protecting the ball and pushing his way forward close to the first down line. And he may be a little bit short. Brian Williamson on the stop. But the Raider game plan of run the ball, run the ball, has been very, very effective. You know that there's nothing there's there is nothing worse in an football league and there's nothing more demoralizing uh, of a game played with men filled with testosterone and egos than to line up let everybody in the stadium know you're going to run the ball you know they're going to run the ball they know they're going to run the ball and you can't stop it. langston walker is in as an eligible tackle myra fell down gets up and he's dragged down by Brian Williams for a loss on the play. I think he got stepped on coming out. When he's coming out from behind center, he never really got fully out, went straight down to the ground. Sebastian Janikowski will come on with a field goal kicking unit. See, his yeah. right foot gets stepped on, and I don't know if that was by the guard or the center stepping back, but his right foot gets pinned. The Raiders have had 40 offensive plays in the game, 30 runs, 10 passes. So there's nothing worse than 30 runs. Oh, Sam. boy. 42 yard, 52 yard attempt. Janikowski on the way, and it is no good. So the Raiders fail to capitalize. They maintain an 11 point lead early in. Great Tim Brown has had only one reception in today's game. Uh, when you throw the ball seven times in a game, you're, you're lucky to have any. The Vikings start with good field position at the 42 after the missed field goal, which apparently was tipped at the line of scrimmage. A couple of play fakes again. Go outside of Klein Sasha oh. when he dropped it. Had it and then took a hit from Travian Smith. Let's get an update. JB standing by. Breaking a 13-13 tie, 17 plays, 98 yards in that drive for Green Bay. Amon Green takes it over from one yard, seventh consecutive game with a touchdown for Green. That is a Packers record. Green Bay on top by a touch. Back to Sam, Bill, and Chris. See Tampa Bay at four and five. They can't afford a loss here. Green Bay in the race against Minnesota in the NFC North on second and ten out of the shotgun. Paul Pepper hands off to Mo Williams on the delay, bounces off, gets a couple more yards, and is thrown back. Chris Cooper with the tackle. A third year defensive tackle, number 75. Gets off with uh, some talk with Mo Williams, and they separate. And Travian Smith limps to the side. Napoleon Harris comes back on the field. Five defensive backs on for the Raiders. This is third and five. Three wide receivers for the Vikings. Moss to the left against Charles Woodson. Culpepper, plenty of time. Short for Klein Saucer. He was well covered by Eric Barton. Well, there was some holding. I mean, give me Klein Saucer. Yeah, and here it comes. Here it wow. comes. He petitioned Sam. Eric had it, both his fists wrapped in the back of his jersey. Holding number 50 defense, five yard penalty, automatic first down. Why such a late flag, Bill? I don't know, he was stuck in his pants. I'm not quite <laughs> sure, but he did, he did petition here, Sam. I want you to take a look at number 40 and watch him run the curl route right inside there on Eric Barton. Now, see, Barton's got his jerseys right oh, there yeah. pulling on him. It's yeah. the right call, but it came way after the play. But it was the right call. Kelly Campbell is in as a wide receiver. You got to watch how far down your pants you shove that flag. <laughs> they, they tuck them in there and they just leave the beanie ball up top, right in their pants. Woodson and Moss up top. 
against one another on first down. There it is. Culpepper. There it is. Wide open is Campbell at the 22 yard line. Rod Woodson took him down, but the speedy, small Kelly Campbell Rod with a 26 yard pickup. Was all over Philip Buchanan for just turning him loose in the zone like that. He just, he just let Campbell run right through the zone. Seventh catch of the season for Kelly Campbell, second of the game. First down at the Raiders, 21. Boy, the middle of the field is open. Culpepper with time, short to Klein Saucer, ridden down by the middle linebacker, Napoleon Harris, at the 12 and very close, a yard short of the first down. Vikings with a hurry up offense. We're early fourth quarter, and the Vikings trying to climb back in it here. better to huddle up and get the play right Culpepper's gone up and down the line calling the play telling the play to everyone maybe he's having a party and he's writing them all over individually it could be on second down quarterback draw he slipped and fell fumble. and the ball came loose fumble. it's a fumble he just lost the ball he was not tackled fumble by Culpepper recovered by Chris Cooper of the Raiders he has lost more fumbles I've never seen anything like it actually when you Quarterbacks and fumbles and the problems they have holding on to the ball. Think he, of this, Bill. They had only nine turnovers coming into the game. They have five today. The thousand Dante Culpepper with 26 lost. That's most fumbles lost. Now that's that's all players in the league. That's not wow. just quarterbacks. Raiders from the 13 mile on first down, wide open. It's OJ Santiago. He's still going up near midfield. He hadn't caught a pass all season till today. He's got two in the game. Ben Irvin took him down. Big gainer for the Raiders, 35 yards. How about Rick Meyer? Is he the next reclamation project? The next guy that just has stuck around long enough that he's finally somebody's going to turn him into their starting quarterback? It was a heck of a throw to a wide open O.J. Santiago on the scene. Crockett and Wheatley in the backfield. First down, Raiders at their own 49. Jerry Porter in motion. Wheatley. Up about five on first down. Just what the Raiders like. Kenny Mixon on the tackle. I, that is, Raider, the Minnesota Vikings really have a problem with, with the runs. They really do. They have a problem with the run games. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who they're playing. They, they just can't seem to stop it. Where... Can you pinpoint where you think the fault lies? Is it up front? Is it the linebackers? It's the first and second level. I mean, when you can't stop the run, that's directly attributed to your front seven. Meyer got time thrown for Rice, incomplete. He tried to go up with a one-hand grab, but he was covered by Ken Irvin, and Brian Russell, the safety, came over. It'll bring up a third and five for the Raiders. This would have been a spectacular grab. Oh, he goes Rice. up after it. Well, look, they've got a bunch of guys in the box. And so you only have a single safety over the top. And you know that figured, hey, if it's there, take it. I mean, that's that's a rule of thumb in the NFL. You got a single safety high, you put the ball in the air. That means you have more bodies down in the running vicinity, in the box area. And, and it's tough when you have that many bodies in there. Look how many they got in there. To get to the 41 for first down. Meyer looks, looks, and throws, and it's knocked away by Brian Williams. Intended for Jerry Porter. Williams stepped in front and knocked it away. So they went to the air. It's interesting. The Raiders get in a good position, and then two passes fail. Now they have to punt. You have to see what Rick Meyer can do a little bit. You want to see what he's got. He's going to be your guy the rest of the season. Here's Shane Lechter with a punt. Keenan Howry takes it at the seven. Avoids one man. Good return, and he's upended at the 20-yard line. Good tackle on the play by Ronald Curry. Number 89, 39-yard punt, 12-yard return. Good day for the Raiders thus far. The Simpsons will be in action tonight following football. Raiders try to break a five-game losing streak. The Vikings try to break a three-game losing streak. 
Likes need to go 81 yards to get back in it. Culpepper sends everybody out. Plenty of time. Now he goes deep. Way down for wide open Kelly Campbell. He gets up and then he's touched down at the 29 yard line. Campbell was just waiting. He was wide open and just waited for the pass to float to him. And the reason why, Sam, is, I want you to take a look. Randy Moss is a decoy on this. He runs downfield. Now, when he stops, watch. He stops, and he stops and looks in. The safety stopped, and the other corner stopped when Randy Moss stopped. That's how much defenders think about Randy Moss. 52-yard challenge, up, and there's a challenge on the play here by Raiders coach Bill Callahan that it was a uh, completed pass. Oakland is challenging the ruling on the field that the pass was caught. Did it go through his hands? Did it touch the ground? I, 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 didn't, I didn't see from here. Take a look. Did it, nose of the ball hit the ground? The no, ball. it's caught. Got it. He's got. He's fine. He's fine. You know, I think that challenge will. How do you do that? Fail. How the heck do you do that? That's talent. Wow. Poor Kelly Campbell, he just waited and waited for that ball to get for Bill After Callahan. reviewing the play, the receiver did catch the ball and never touched the ground. Oakland will be charged their first time out, first down, Minnesota. So, the, Kelly Campbell. The, the big thing of it was is, is, is you saw Randy Moss stop on the route. He, he runs to a spot, he stopped. And when he stopped, the safety stopped over top of him. The corner stopped and looked in at him. Because you're thinking, you know, you're going to throw the ball deep. You're going to throw it to Randy Moss. And... There Campbell goes, he just keeps going behind him. 52 yard pickup. First down for the Vikings at the 29. Paul Pepper with time. He's gotten a lot of time throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Kelly Campbell. Two in a row. From Paul Pepper to Campbell. And the Vikings answer back. A 52 yarder and then a 29 yarder as he beat Philip Buchanan on the play and for Kelly Campbell his third touchdown of the season. I, was Randy Moss out there. Well, I, I want to say this is a cover two defense. The middle of the field is where you're suspect on cover two and speaking of two they're going they, to the Vikings will go for two to try to cut the lead to three points. Quarterback draw again. Moss out to the right. Against Woodson. Mo Williams in the backfield. Short drop, the fake, the blitz coming. He spun away, now throws. It's complete to Hunter Goodwin, the tight end. The conversion is good. That was all full pepper. He got away from Eric Johnson, who was blitzing late, and that kept the play alive. And he bought enough time to get it to the tight end. 80 yards passing after 370 last week against San Diego. Alvis witted on the return. Brought down. Nice tackle again by Russian Jones. Sam, I want to go back to the touchdown and how Minnesota scored. On the left side is Randy Moss, okay? And on the other side, here's Dwayne Bates, and then here's Kelly Campbell. I want you to watch what Moss does here. He's on the left side. He comes upfield. Now, the safety in cover two is going to come into the picture right there. See him? That means he's not over here where the two safeties are. Kelly Campbell splits the two safeties, and that's where the touchdown comes. The Vikings went 81 yards in two plays to turn this game into a nail-biter. Short gain up to the 25. Tyrone Wheatley carries. Kevin Williams on the tackle for Minnesota. And now it's up to the Vikings' defense. Or is it up to the Raiders offense? Well, you, may, you mentioned nail biter. You know who's a guy who's a nail biter? <laughs> George O'Leary. Look at this. He, he, he's a bite. He worries and he bites his nails. He's always he's a real nervous guy. And, and he says, watching these guys in the NFL and, and in the last couple of weeks they've had, says cause him to bite his nails down to a little nose. Myra on second down. Throws, completes to Jerry Porter, who gets away and is brought down up to 43. Nice effort by Jerry Porter, his first catch of the game. They went with three wide receivers, and Porter was the man they found. Porter will make you bite. 
his speed, and this guy's been injured too, and he uh -huh. doesn't practice much. They only play him a certain amount during the game due to his injury, but his speed and his athletic ability and the way he can catch the ball and change a game on you, that's what will make a defense coordinator bite your nails. OJ Salty out of the tight end back in. Motions to the right, Wheatley carrying into the pile. Short pickup on the play. Previous pickup, the pass to Porter was an 18-yard gain. Beaker and Claiborne in on the tackle. We haven't mentioned Chris Claiborne much. He's been playing hurt. Beaker has been effective in this game, but Claiborne's been rather quiet. Well, you know, too, who else has been quiet is the defensive line. You know, as many runs as there's been, those guys should be making more attack. Tovan, I think we've called once. Williams has played pretty well, I think. The pass from Myra wide open to Sherry Porter. He's down by Corey Chavis. On a big gain down to the 25-yard line. So Myra shows that he can hit a couple of big ones too. This one for 31. You know, Mike Tice said yesterday to me that we're gonna blitz more than we have in the past. And I want you to go back. Can we go back and take a look at that real quick one more time, please? I want to show you, when you blitz, you've got to get there. Here you've got men on the ground. Vikings players are down on the ground. When you blitz, it's a gamble. You're giving up coverage to pressure back. If you don't get there, you're going to get burned. First down at the 25, Wheatley straight ahead. It's about three on the play. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing how you can just talk to the TV fairies? Can we please go back and look oh, at that again? One they, more time. And the, TV the TV fairies are all over. It's you, huh? Myra. They, I wish for, for something 12. and it appears magically. Did a good job last week against the Jets. Nine for 12, 195 yards in this one. He's going to be. Are you, watch. He will be the next reclamation quarterback, a guy that stuck around, learned, had his ups and downs, and persevered. If he can win. Santiago, the tight end, shifted to the right. Tim Brown in motion, straight ahead. Wheatley cuts it back, big hole, and goes down to the 11-yard line for a first down for the Raiders. Sam, I'm seeing so much of this in the NFL, this ghost motion. You have a fake reverse that's going to come here. Now, the defensive end has to stay outside to honor the reverse. But when he stays outside, look at the alley right inside of him. There's that run. More and more teams in the NFL, I'm seeing this reverse, fake reverse. They want to see how the defensive end plays it. If he stays outside, we're going to run the ball. If he crashes down inside, we'll give it to the reverse. From the 11, Wheatley straight ahead, barreling his way to the six-yard line. He picked up five on the play. NFL right now, teams are running the heck out of it to see how the defensive end plays it. With four wide receivers in, the handoff. to Tyrone Wheatley. He comes up short of the line of scrimmage. Tyrone Wheatley has carried for over 100 yards in the game. He has been the workhorse back, and he takes you back to what they were doing last year. The Minnesota Vikings gave up 261 yards three weeks ago to the Green Bay Packers on the ground. Last week against San Diego, they gave up 211 yards to LaDainian Tomlinson. So far today, they've got 177 yards on the ground, two running backs. On third down, the toss to Wheatley. Two men in front of him. Slipped one, hopped over another, fights his way down to the four-yard line. You know when I talk about blocking, the different ways to block, the first level, the second level, the third level, different levels. Watch how you get to the perimeter on this, Sam. Look at Jerry Porter. Jerry Porter comes flying inside and cracks Kenny Mixon. They come up a couple of yards short of the first down marker, so Time Sebastian out. Janikowski comes on the field, and the Raiders call a timeout. I don't think they I don't think they have enough players out there. That's quite possible. Off the field. There's Fred Villetnikoff. We talk about the MVP of that game. The Raiders. Raiders have decided to go for it rather than settle for a point lead, which they could be beaten if Minnesota gets seven. They're going to go for it here. Hey, well, when you're averaging five yards a carry, 
why the heck not? They have to get to the one yard line for a first down. The ball is just inside the four. Let's see what Mike Tice comes up with with his defense. Three wide receivers. Zach Crockett, the running back. Myra rolling, throwing wide up the tail. Dropped it. Oh, my. Tim Brown, the great Tim Brown, wide open, just dropped it. A sure touchdown in his hands. They call the right play. You don't ever, you don't see that very often. And you haven't seen that much in the career of Tim Brown. Sometimes things just happen and, and there are no explanations for it. Wow. So Vikings take over 96 and a half yards away with 306 on the clock. And the crowd making as much noise as they possibly can. Three wide receivers for Minnesota. Here comes the blitz. Culpepper throws outside, nobody there. Wayne Bates went right down the sideline as Culpepper was looking for somebody to move outside. Well, when you have a blitz, your receivers have to read the C blitz, and then they routed Jess off that. And that was obviously supposed to be a comeback route on the blitz, and Dwayne Bates never saw the blitz. He's looking inside. He should clearly see it. That's supposed to be a comeback right there. But he keeps running the go route, and Culpepper threw the right route. Dwayne Bates didn't see it. Three wide receivers. Let's throw again. Here they come. Culpepper, sideline for Campbell, overthrown. Throwing the ball too deep, Bill. Why not go short passes to get out from away from the goal line? And short passes probably would have been the good decision there. Randy Moss was one on one in the middle of the field. Nope. Nobody underneath. And when you get Randy Moss one on one, watch Moss. He's going to come working into the middle of the field right here. Watch him come underneath. See? And he was right in the middle of the field there. Raiders you take your shot one on ones and work underneath work in that big body in the middle of the field Moss hasn't caught a pass in the second half. Here's third and ten for the Vikings. They protect against the blitz the pass is almost intercepted it is. Woodson returning Woodson with the ball to the 11 yard line. Rod Woodson diving. For the interception, Dante Culpepper gets too excited in those situations. The clock's running down, the possession, drive the field. He gets too hyper. He's still a young quarterback that gets overly excited. They're going to challenge whether this was an interception or not. As you called it, Sam, almost an interception, but the way Woodson came up underneath it, I don't know if he got his hands underneath that or not. This is very close. Ooh, that is tough. It looks. It look, oh, I don't know. I think he got it. it it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty good. It's I don't know. Close. Here's the thing about it is, I don't know from any of these angles if it can be conclusive enough evidence to overrule to that to overrule what's called on the field. Good point. Good point. If he did, this is a magnificent. From that from, from what we've seen, it looks like his arm is on between the ball and the ground. But I don't know if from any of the angles we're going to be able to get conclusive visual evidence to overturn the ruling on the field. That left hand looks like it's underneath the ball. Rod Woodson. With a diving, yeah, the thing about attempt. it is, Sam, and I, getting back to the point, when when Randy, I mean, I'm sorry, Dante Culpepper gets so excited, he has to be the cool, calm head that prevails in that huddle. He, he has to be, and, and he gets so excited. You saw, you said the throw way on the sidelines, deep, and this throw here, and then that throw, which I don't know who the heck that was to. He had time in the pocket. It, you know, he rushes. He gets really excited. He's he's got to find a way to channel that. 
So now we await the decision on the challenge. We welcome those of you who has the decision. After reviewing the play, there was no shot that showed the ball on the ground. Therefore, it is an interception. First down Raiders. Minnesota is charged their first time now. And that's that's the whole thing. You know, you, there's not enough visual evidence from any angle that we have on replay that would overrule the ruling on the field. The ruling on the field was an interception. From all the angles shown, you can't really tell if the ball hit the ground or not. So the ruling stands. That is six turnovers in the game for the Minnesota Vikings, who had nine all season coming into play. Three interceptions thrown by Dante Culpepper. He had three all season long. Rod Woodson with the second of the season. Tyro is rushed for over 100 yards, goes down to the six yard line. The story of the game the Minnesota Vikings have killed themselves with turnovers. That's the second play of the Opening game. Opening series, Philip Buchanan re returned the interception for a touchdown. This was a fumble recovery. This was a fumble by Culpepper that was turned into a touchdown one play later. Buchanan intercepting in the end zone. Culpepper fumbled on his own. He fell to the ground and fumbled the ball. In the red zone. And here the interception by Rod Woodson. Three fumbles lost for Minnesota. Three interceptions thrown by Dante Culpepper. And there's no way in the NFL that you can survive losing that many turnovers. And I don't care where you're playing. But on the road, forget about it. They're very fortunate that they're in this game at all. See the numbers, they tell the story. As far as plus three of is a huge chance to win. If you're below the even mark, you're losing. The handoff by Rick Meyer to Tyrone Wheatley. He's knocked down by Henri Crockett. JB has got an update for us. Let's join him now. Big day for Edrin James. Three rushing touchdowns. Here's the third, 127 yards on the ground. Tony Dungy becomes the first coach to beat all 32 teams. Indianapolis victorious over the Jets. Back to Sam Rosen. Indianapolis at 8 and 2 remains tied with Tennessee at 8 and 2 in the AFC South. The Vikings have used their last timeout. There'll be a third down coming up for Oakland. The Raiders are trying to break a five game losing streak. They have lost four of those five games by seven points or fewer. They're going with Rick Meyer for the rest of the season as their number one quarterback. Rob Johnson is the backup. He was signed last week. Rich Gannon is standing right there. The NFL MVP last year. He had shoulder surgery a couple of days ago. And he's done for the season as is the previous number two Marcus Tuiasasopo. And for the Raiders today the story has been the offensive line and the running backs. I mean they've just hammered the ball for a total of 185 yards on the ground. Rick Meyer, only a few passes given, but it's been pretty precise on all those passes. They have to get to the one for first down. Meyer in pressure. Runs, crosses the line of scrimmage, dives. Whoa, he went up there and was flipped by Ken Irvin. Where's the spot going to be? A yard short of the first down. Wow. That's a, that's a gutsy move. Yeah, you, know, you know what that reminded me of? Remember that highlight you film you've seen of John Elway when he gives up in the air and spun around like a helicopter? That's that. You know what I'm talking about? Guess what? He'll be on the highlights tonight. This guy could be the next quarterback reclamation project, a guy that's persevered ups and downs in the league, and that's what I believe to, to play quarterback in this league anymore. He came down hard on his back. Last time down here, just a couple of minutes ago, the Raiders had the same situation. They had a fourth and two and they went for it. Tim Brown dropped a short touchdown wide open in the end zone. Now they're going to put three on the board to make it a six point game. Janikowski puts it through. Oh, wait a second. There's, there, they, we got a challenge flag that came out. A challenge flag came out on the Raiders sideline before that snap got off. The challenge by Oakland came out before the snap. Right. Uh, and it, it can only be the spot of that's, the ball. That's exactly right. Be smart. Hey, you know, hey, let's exhaust every possible scenario we possibly can. Mm -hmm. he, he's trying to secure a win here. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. The, the progress was at the two-yard line. Oakland has charged their third timeout.
So the Raiders are out of timeouts. The Vikings are out of timeouts. Now Sebastian Janikowski another chance to kick the field goal. Mike Tice trying to keep his team in it despite all of the mistakes and the turnovers. And now it looks like they will go for it. Okay, they'll do the black hole are celebrating today. Sam Minnesota. 261 yards given up to the Green Bay Packers three weeks ago. 211 rushing yards given up to San Diego and Ladanian Tomlinson last week. Today, they've given up 192 yards rushing. Yes, there is a big problem in the run defense for Minnesota. Ontario Smith deep. Janikowski lets it fly. Smith from the 11. Need a big return. Smith gets outside. Janikowski slips by. And Smith stepped out of bounds. A great return. For those of you who just joined us, here are the scores. Buchanan with the interception early in the game, 64 yard return for a touchdown. Zach Crock had a one yard run as he battled and fought his way for that one yard after a turnover. Tyrone Wheatley spinning his way in for a touchdown. Dante Culpepper on the quarterback draw, then Culpepper hitting Kelly Campbell on a 29 yarder. And then the last one you just saw, Crockett going in. Vikings from the Raiders 44 with no timeouts remaining. The two minute warning coming up. Here comes a blitz. And Cooper slipped off him. And Culpepper runs out of bounds at the 36 yard line. That's the one thing that's really picked up for the Raiders is, is their blitzing late here in the game. I mean, they, they've come after Dante Culpepper because it's been a situation where for the most part they've been forced to pass. And when they've been dropping back, Chuck Bresnahan says, hey, we're, we're after you. And they've been mixing blitz effectively. They've been mixing in the zones. The defense being called by Chuck Bresnahan and the ability the way they're executing the defense out in the field today for the Raiders has been outstanding. They shut down Randy Moss. He's caught only four passes for 25 yards, none in the second half. Culpepper steps up, goes for Moss in the end zone, overthrown. And Charles Woodson all over him as he has been the entire game. You know, he has. You know, we haven't really given the dues or, or the, the Charles Woodson has been deserved. He has held Randy Moss in check all day. Two minute warning. Plan to shut down Randy Moss. The Raiders have done it. And Charles Woodson has been a main reason why. Third and one for the Vikings at the 35 yard line. Paul Pepper. Being pressured, throws short, and it's dropped by Dwayne Bates, covered by Eric Barton on the play. You, you know, Sam, and normally when you play the Minnesota Vikings, if you take away and you hold him to four catches for 25 yards and no touchdowns, normally how they rebound from that is they run the heck out of the football. They rely on that big offensive line. They rely on Mo Williams and, and Michael Bennett. But today, They've only gotten 89 yards rushing. And they passed 43 times. Culpepper 25 for 43, 380 yards, and three interceptions. On fourth down, shovel pass to Mo Williams. He's got the first down. Harris, a helmet popper, his own. Harris gets up with a smile on his face. They got to go no huddle now. Uh, no timeouts remaining. Clock running a minute and a half to go. And the Vikings need two scores. Paul Pepper gets time. Oh, 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 oh. And that pass is incomplete oh, okay. for Kelly Campbell. They, they are letting Charles Woodson and Randy Moss play like time football. There has been more contact more holding more bumping and chucking and hands and jersey pulling going on between those two guys all day and no flags have come out i mean on that play right there he was all over we welcome those of you who just watched the lions and the seahawks sam rosen bill Moss, chris myers in oakland the raiders leading 28 to 18 time winding down on the vikings on Culpepper with time, throws to Jim Kleinsaucer. 
fights his way, stayed in bounds. Should have gone out of bounds, stayed in bounds, goes down at the 18. That's not the Klein Saucer's makeup. Vikings what, going out of bounds. Yeah, right. he just he just keeps he's just so used to bowling people over, but he's got to conserve time. Vikings need two scores. They are down by 10 and in danger of losing for the fourth time in a row. Everybody out. Cole Pepper being rushed. Gets away from Rod Coleman. Looks to the end zone. Run. And he's out of bounds at the 14 yard line. 43 seconds remaining. It's been a mixed bag today for Dante Culpepper. He's got a career record today. Three wide receivers on second down. Moss in motion, and Woodson goes with him. Then he lets Buchanan pick him up. Culpepper looking, throwing Oops. short. And I don't know what happened. He may have been hit, but he had been hit. I, I think he was thrown to the umpire. <laughs> Terry Howie and Jimmy scores a Fox Sports ticker. It's all coming up at the conclusion of this game. On third down, they pick up the blitz, the throw into the corner for Moss, the jump ball, Woodson came down with it, but it's incomplete. He was out of bounds beyond the end line, but once again, beautiful coverage by Charles Woodson on Randy Moss. Charles Woodson, I, I can't say enough about the job he's done. Now, he's had help. He's had help, but there was no that play right there. He went up after the ball. He battled for it. He's given up a couple inches to Randy Moss, but he outmuscles it. Wow. Great position. He knew the fade route was coming to the corner and played it perfect. Vikings have to get to the nine yard line for a first down, but time is the key element here. They need two scores. The blitz coming. Culpepper throwing to the end zone, incomplete, and that's it. The Oakland Raiders will win this one. It'll be four losses in a row for Mike Tice and the Minnesota Vikings, and their lead in the NFC North is down to one game over the Green Bay Packers. Well, there's a little post route right there, and that ball was just thrown high and hard and excitable, just like Dante Culpepper was forced to play. And when you put the game into his hands, it's not that he's not good enough. It's not the best situation for the Minnesota offense. They're much better when they can run the ball and pick the times and places where they pass. Well, they talked about wanting to run the ball, but they never got it going. The Raiders did. Their run game was brilliant. A disappointed Dante Culpepper. For Rick Myrer, it's a win. And his first win since 1999. Rick Myrer as the number one quarterback of the Oakland Raiders with Gann with Tuyasa Sopo out. Yes, he is the reclamation project and he helped lead the Oakland Raiders to a 28-18 win over the Minnesota Vikings. The Raiders streak is over, the Vikings continue. We'll be right back.